This example uses grouped data. Uh, so the first two columns are showing uh, the temperatures in degrees Celsius that were recorded during the month of July. And so we can see that if we scroll down here, we go down to 31 days, because there's 31 days in July. Uh, but it probably makes sense to group this data into intervals before trying to uh, come up with a frequency diagram or a cumulative frequency diagram. Uh, so in order to split this up into intervals, what we want to do is take a look at what's the range of this data. In other words, what's the lowest value and what's the highest value and how many values are in between. So if we take a look at this data, it looks like 18 degrees is the lowest and 33 degrees is the highest. So we want uh, our intervals to go f from at least a minimum of 18 up to 33, although we could maybe extend that a little bit on each side. So let's say we start our first interval at 18. So our first interval will start at 18 and we'll go up to, and we can choose this, we can choose an appropriate value. So let's say we want to do maybe five intervals. If we wanted to do five intervals, we would have to go up by three degrees. So our first interval is going to go from 18 to 21. Uh, and then the second interval will go from 21 up to 24. Now, the reason I'm using these different kinds of brackets, the square bracket indicates that we're going to include that value as part of the interval. And uh, the round bracket indicates that we're going to not include that value as part of the interval. This ensures that if we have a value exactly on an interval, like 21, for example, uh, 21 is exactly on the borderline of each of these intervals, we know that it's going to be included in the second interval, but not in the first. That way we aren't counting things twice in two different intervals. Uh, the third one is going to start at 24. I can go to 27, and then we're going to have from 27 up to 30, and from 30 to 33. Now the problem here is we know our highest value is 33, uh, but this interval won't include the value 33, so we're going to have to add another interval here that goes from 33 up to 36. Our intervals should be equally spaced. So if one interval is 3 degrees, then we can't have another interval that's 5 degrees. Then what we're going to do is list the midpoint of each of these intervals. And that's going to be uh, what we use for our axis labels on our frequency diagram and cumulative frequency diagram. Uh, so the midpoint of the first interval would be 19.5. That's halfway in between. Midpoint for the second. 22.5, and we're going to list all of them out. Now, for grouped data, when we have raw data that's presented like this and we're putting it into intervals, uh, it's actually easier to come up with the cumulative frequency first. So what we're going to do to find the cumulative frequency is we're going to use the count if function in Excel. So the count if function takes two different arguments. First is the range of data that you want to look at. So the range of data we're looking at is from the first temperature all the way to the 31st temperature. And then we're going to put in a comma. And the second argument that it takes is the criteria. So what's going to happen is we want to count up the number of times that we get a value within this interval. Right. So if we're going to get a value within this interval, then it basically means we're going to get a value that is less than 21. Strictly less than because we're not including the 21 in this interval. The 21 will be included in the next interval. So we want all the numbers that are strictly less than 21. So in quotations, we're going to type in less than 21. That's our criteria for whether or not we want to count uh, that particular data item. Then we're going to close the bracket and hit enter. Okay. So again, here's the formula at the top here. So what this did was it checked all of the values from cell B2 up to cell B32 and checked to see if they were less than 21. 
if there was a value less than 21, then it counted how many of the how many times that happened. So this means that there was three values in this table that were less than 21. And we already know that there was no values less than 18. So it has to be three values within this interval. For the next one, we're going to do the same thing. So count if, okay, same range. So we're going to go from B2 up to B22. And this time the criteria is going to be that we're looking for values less than 24. Remember, this is the cumulative frequency that we're calculating. So uh, if we count the number that are less than 24, then we're also going to get the ones that are included in this interval. But that's okay because we're calculating cumulative frequency. Okay. Oh, and I just noticed I made a mistake with this formula, so let's go back and fix that. That should be up to be 32. Okay. So what this means is that we know there's six values that are less than 24 degrees. Uh, which, based on this chart, we know that there has to be three in each of those categories. Uh, so we'll work out the frequency part after. Okay, next one, again, count if B2 up to B32. And the criteria this time is that it's less than 27. And we're going to fill in similar formulas for the last three. Okay, so we get the rest of our cumulative frequency table filled out. In order to calculate the frequency, what we can do is subtract consecutive cumulative frequencies. So the first one, well, we know if the cumulative frequency for the first interval is 3, then the frequency for the first interval has to be 3 as well. So that one's easy. For the second one, if we take the cumulative frequency from the second interval and subtract the cumulative frequency from the first interval, that should leave us with how many are only in interval 2. So we're going to do a similar calculation for the rest of the frequencies. So the third one will be the cumulative frequency from the third interval, interval minus all of the previous frequencies, which would be the cumulative frequency from the second interval. And again, we'll fill in the rest of the chart accordingly. So now we've got both a cumulative frequency table and a regular frequency table. So we could do a uh, frequency diagram and a cumulative frequency diagram. So insert line graph. This one's going to be our regular frequency. So we're going to select data and our series will be the frequencies. And our horizontal axis uh, will be the midpoints of our intervals. Okay. Depending on the context of the question you're working with, sometimes you might want the midpoints. Uh, sometimes it might make sense to actually put the full intervals as your labels. And we can add in axis titles. So here we're looking at temperature. And on the vertical axis is our frequency. Or in other words, how many times did that particular temperature value happen? And we can put in a title. Uh, so this would be frequency of temperature in the month of July. Okay. Now, instead of doing a whole new line graph, I'm going to just copy and paste the line graph that we've already got here. Uh, but I'm going to go into design and hit select data so that we can make this into a cumulative frequency graph. So here, uh, we want to remove the series that we had there 
and we're going to select the cumulative frequencies this time. Uh, and then again, our midpoints. Okay, and that will give us our cumulative frequency. Uh, again, we can right click and have the graph show markers for the different points. Okay. So the cumulative graph is helpful because it shows us how many days had up to that temperature. So for example, if we wanted to know how many days had uh, a temperature less than about 31.5 degrees, we can look here. Uh, and we know that the value there is 29, so there were 29 days that had a temperature less than 31, which means only two days that had a temperature more than 31. Uh, now that would be approximate, of course, because we are working with grouped data here. So if we wanted to know exactly how many days were less than 31.5 degrees or more than 31.5 degrees, we would go back to the raw data and work directly with that.